What's up guys, my name is Max and today I'm gonna to be telling you about how I build battery cables uh, for vehicles. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the different materials you're gonna need, uh, some of the different components you're gonna need, some of the different techniques that we can use, and then we're gonna wrap this all up by replacing the battery cables of the connections on a 1974 Johnson outboard uh, motor on a boat that we're repairing. And if you wanna check out more information uh, about the boat, as well as uh, that project, I will put the link down below and put a card up here. You guys can go check out that playlist. So what we need to do today is we need to replace the battery connections from uh, the battery, makes sense all the way to the starter motor. And on an outboard motor, there's basically a junction point where it comes to the starter, so the starter relay, and that's where it feeds positive for the ignition coils and everything else on the motor. When it comes to talking about uh, battery cables, there's um, a lot of misconceptions, and I'm gonna tell you guys about how I do things. Um, I'm also gonna point out a few common pitfalls and a few things that you'll see often uh, talked about on the internet that in my opinion are kind of nonsense um, and so so let's let's start with the basics right so the first thing that's most important is um, you need battery cable for your battery cables uh, things important in a battery cable uh, as you can see this is stranded uh, generally speaking for battery cables you want flexibility the best kind of flexibility is going to be uh, a cable that has a maximum number of strands uh, so the, you never want to use solid core wiring for anything in a vehicle. And the reason for that is because copper work hardens and then cracks. Uh, this isn't really a problem when you use it in the walls of your house, because if your walls are moving enough that it work hardens or copper, you've got bigger problems. Uh, but in a vehicle where there's constant vibrations and things are moving around all the time, uh, you want to use stranded copper. And that's what this is. Uh, now, stranded copper comes in a lot of different varieties. I like using this sort of thing where it's like a, a welding cable. Uh, it's rated for outdoor use. You can buy actual automotive uh, battery cable in different sizes. It's a little bit more expensive, has different UL ratings. Um, I've had a lot of experience with this. This is basically Amazon sourced, inexpensive um, battery cable. On something like this outboard motor, this is uh, six gauge. We're actually gonna use four gauge for the actual wire. Um, but uh, on vehicles, I run as high as, you know, double lock gauge, depending on the output of your alternator, the output of your battery, and kind of the overall load uh, on the electrical system of the vehicle. So this is a battery. This is a marine battery. This is what you'd call a normal marine starting battery. Um, it has two terminals here. I believe these are 5 sixteenths terminals, but this is gonna be our power unit. So we have to connect from here on one side to uh, the motor on the other. And the way that we connect that to this cable, for example, is we use crimp connectors. This is a crimp connector. Uh, these are drilled for a specific hole size. This is a number six, number 10. What that means is this takes a six gauge wire, like this wire that's laying here, and it has a number 10 screw hole in it. So this is uh, kind of for smaller projects. Um, also, you can always drill these out. Normally, most uh, battery studs are gonna be 5 16 or both studs are gonna be 3 8 um, So I've got some of those in here as well. For example, uh, the here is like a really big one, right? So this one is double aught by 3 8 So it uh, takes a double aught wire and has a 3 8 inch hole. So now that we've got our crimps, right uh, we've got our wire we've got our crimps we've laid everything out we need to crimp the end of this wire um, with something and this is going to be kind of what we're looking at for our finished product right so this looks really nice it's got a little bit of heat shrink on it it's got our uh, connection tab so how do we crimp one of these guys or how do we attach one of these guys uh, to our wire so what I like to use, I like to use crimps. And for crimps, there's a couple of different tools. There's something like this, which is basically a mechanical crimp. Uh, this one will do four gauge, six, so eight to uh, single aught gauge is what this will do. Um, another option that's very common is you'll see something like this. Um, this is called a hammer crimp. Um, you can find these for less than 10 bucks on Amazon or eBay. And basically you pick the anvil up 
you put your little uh, crimp piece in. So for example, pick this up, right? We put our crimp in, we put our cable in on one side and we hammer this until it collapses the copper and then it will crush it on. I don't really like using this unless I absolutely have to. It doesn't give you as good of a crimp as an actual like directional crimp where it crimps all the way around. Um, this is definitely a little bit of a, uh, a cheap solution, but if you're in a pinch, this absolutely works and uh, it can be used to make really good connections. Our next step up, for example, is something like this. This is a hydraulic crimp and it basically works the same exact way as this guy does. Uh, but this is designed for much larger, um, larger wires. And so the way that this works is there's a hydraulic cylinder built into this. So we put this on and then we pump the hydraulic cylinder. And as you can see, there's a ram that goes up. And what this is going to do is it's going to crush the crimp inside of here. And this is really good if you're working on really big, uh, big wires. These uh, can be found for less than $100, I think, on Amazon. I'll put links to everything in the description down below. Um, I've used this to make big battery cables for big off-road trucks. Uh, it works really great. Basically, if this is too small, this is the next step up, and it's good to have these things uh, in your garage when you need them. The final thing that I want to talk about uh, is soldering. Whether you choose to believe that soldering is better than crimping, um, I think both have their place. There's nothing wrong with them. But if for some reason you don't have any crimps, but you have a source of heat and you have a lot of solder, you can also take one of these crimps, for example, this guy, put it in a vise, heat it cherry red uh, right here, and then basically dissolve a tin full of solder into there. And then when, while it's still all liquid and boiling, you just stick the end of your wire in there, you let it cool, um, and then you will have a pretty good connection. I prefer crimping. I think it's faster. I think it's cleaner. There's less heat. You're less likely to burn your fingers with it. Um, but this is completely a viable solution. A lot of people have built a lot of really cool stuff uh, using soldered fittings like this. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, you'll also see people who will crimp something and then fill it with solder. That's okay too. I have not found that that is worth the extra energy uh, in my experience, but uh, a lot of people uh, do that and it will work completely fine. The last piece you need is this. This is heat shrink. This is 301 reduction heat shrink. And basically what happens is after you crimp or solder or whatever, you have this and you have a connection to the wire here and it's basically just, uh, just sticking out, right? So you're like this and you got a little copper sticking out and you're like, well, that looks fine, but now this can move around, but this sheath is harder. What you do is you slip the heat shrink over it to a point where you're comfortable. I usually do it right to the bottom of the blade like that. And then you heat shrink this in and this acts as both uh, stress relief for your connection as well as just a little bit of extra insulation. Make sure you don't ground anything on like a weird bounce or whatever. All of these techniques work. Generally, if you kind of follow any of these tried and true methods, you're gonna have a good time. Um, as far as sizing wire, uh, there are some people, especially on the internet, who have this weird belief that you need double odd battery wire for everything. It's completely nonsensical. Uh, generally speaking, if you're replacing something that was uh, an OEM application, for example, on this boat, there are currently old, very badly corroded wires running from where the battery used to be to the starter motor. Uh, they are four gauge and we're gonna replace them with four gauge. Uh, and the reason for that is because four gauge, I think is rated to about 160 amps, which is more than the starter will ever pull, which is fine, right? It's fine. You don't need to go to double lot gauge wire for everything. It's completely preposterous as long as you have a reasonable understanding of what you're doing from a scientific standpoint, it makes total sense to make a jump. But jumping three or four sizes up, uh, unless you have you know competition hydraulics or a competition sound system, going up multiple sizes in wire just adds uh, weight and inflexibility to your setup. My recommendation is you stick with an OEM or at most you go plus one. Uh, another thing that's really useful to have in addition to the torch is a heat gun. A good heat gun makes heat shrink work a lot better than using a lighter. One last thing before we kind of wrap up the general info section. 
Um, all of these tools are fairly portable, which means that you can use them on the vehicle. Obviously, the bigger the wire, the bigger the crimp, the harder it is to get something like this into a tight space. You know, common sense really, really comes comes into play there. All of that said, that's how I build battery cables. I know it's been kind of a little bit of a long-winded explanation, uh, but now let's transition over to the boat and figure out what it is that we need to do. All right, now that we're over at the boat, let me show you guys kind of what I was talking about. So this right here is our starter. This right here is our starter solenoid. The battery input, which is down here, to the starter output, which is right here, which turns the starter. The starter is grounded to the block. And this is where our negative battery cable goes, is basically grounded to the block as well. As you can see, these battery wires go back through this grommet right there, through that hole in the side, and then out over there. But we definitely want to replace these original wires, and I'll show you guys where they go in the boat next. Here we are inside the boat, and you can see here's our positive, here's our negative. And now you might say, well, it doesn't look that bad. Trust me, when your wire starts looking like this, you end up with a lot of impedance. And that impedance and then kills batteries, lowers your ability to crank, and so on. So it basically just runs through here, out the back here. And so I think all we really need to do is split it out of this loom and pull it out. And then we'll be able to do the rest of the work outside the boat. So here's our wire all laid out. We're basically going to make new battery cables, kind of the same length as the old ones. And... Uh, we're also going to we're also going to add a provision to use this thing this is just a part that i had left over from some other boat or trailer or something this is the battery selector switch it's going to make it much easier uh long term keep the battery from draining uh, you always want to have one of those on a boat it also allows you to use two batteries at the same time which is also important um, but for now all we're going to do is we're going to use so this battery cable that we're replacing is number four, same size as what we're replacing. And uh, this is a number four by three eighths connector. And as you can see, it's actually kind of big. These are probably five sixteenths. We're gonna have to use these, but uh, it'll fit under the nut, it'll be fine. So we use these, we're gonna use um, some heat shrink. So here's our two wires. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start on our positive here. And what I like to do is I like to cut mm, probably about half an inch. And I just use a knife. Um, in theory, if you've got little cutters that are this big, you can use those. Uh, and then, as you can see, there's our uh, positive. There's kind of how it fits onto our little connector. We have this set for a four gauge wire. We're gonna put in our wire and make sure it's taut. And then we're just gonna, there we go. Sometimes you gotta crimp it twice. Um, these are not my favorite crimps. But now that this is fully secured, I will slip a piece of heat shielding onto it. We've got our heat gun here. I can promise you that's going nowhere. So now we're just gonna do three more of these and then we'll be done. So just for demonstration purposes, for the folks that love tinning things, if you've already crimped it, you can also tin it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this torch. We're gonna get just this fitting hot. There it goes. And it just starts melting in there. Now keep in mind, this is now super duper duper hot. So you definitely don't want to just grab it. But you can see it is now full of solder. Is this worth the extra energy? I don't think so. Uh, but a lot of people like to do this. So there's definitely nothing wrong with it uh, if you're in that camp. So now we got everything cabled up. Our ground is back where it is. Our power is right there we've got it running out through the little grommet there and we're going down to the battery additionally we have the positive of our jumper solenoid hooked up to the positive uh start of the um starter relay and so now we can see if the motor is going to crank and we got a little can of go juice here to see if uh, maybe we can even get it to cough a little bit for you guys And 
just like that she fires up and if you guys saw in the previous video this thing was cranking really slow but now we have all new battery cables she cranks uh perfectly fine right off of the battery with that i want to thank you guys for watching if you have any questions about how i make battery cables or if it's different than the way you do it and you want to uh, give me some tips give me some pointers let me know how you guys do it in the real world uh, feel free to leave a comment down below if you like the content on this channel please subscribe make sure you check out the rest of our uh, boat videos i'll put the playlist down below for you guys to check out and uh, now that we've got the ability to crank it uh pretty well on command next step is to rebuild the carburetors and see if we can make it run so i want to thank you guys for watching see you in the next episode